Hey there, my name is Dina Falcone and what is happening right now is spring, early spring is on us. We just passed the vernal equinox and all of these amazing wild greens are popping and one of them that I want you to meet today is called cardamine, also called land cress, spring cress or bitter, hairy, hairy bitter cress. That's the least good name for it. It is not very bitter and it does have very, very fine hairs along the leaf stalk, the petiole, which I'll show you. But I am stepping all over this cress, this cardamine. It is a carpet at my feet. What does it have flavor wise? It is an arugula like, cabbage like, uh, brassicaceae e family. How would you say? Peppery a little bit and watercressy, but it's a land cress. So here we have this most early spring green that pops. It actually sprouts usually before winter or during winter in fall, and then it'll come through the winter and show itself again now. And it's a perfect time for foraging cardamine, this uh, cardamine hirsuta. And what else to say about it? So we've got that lovely flavor that we can add to dishes, to raw dishes. So we can really be um, enjoying this in our salad bowl. We can also add it to sauces, to pestos. We can add it at the end to soups. It's delicate. It's like a mescaline of the wild. So you don't really want to be cooking it heavily, in my opinion. What else to say about this? Nutritionally speaking, I don't want to be stepping on it, but essentially it's my carpet here, which is pretty incredible that Mother Earth is just popping these gifts up. But so what's the nutritional value? There's not a whole lot written about cardamine, nutritionally speaking. But because it's in the Brassicaceae family and it relates to the arugula watercress um, realm, I'm going to suggest and most likely it contains a good amount of vitamin C, beta carotene, calcium, magnesium, potassium. So we've got this very nutrient uh, dense in the sense of vitamins and minerals uh, green at our feet. And so we will go into detail about how to key it out. I wanna make sure you know how to identify this. For now though, let's actually get to harvesting it. Quickly though, before foraging, let's discuss where you are going to find this. This is a native of Eurasia, but it is now somewhat invasive throughout the world. In the United States, it grows in hardiness zones four to eight. You're gonna find it in many of the US states, not so much in the Midwest. And where does it like to go at, grow actually in terms of soil? It loves where humans are disturbing soil. So you're gonna find it in gardens, lawns, and especially rich soils and moist soils. And that's where we're standing actually. It's an area that the chickens have created in incredible fertility and we've put lots of mulch here and it is super happy. So we have a rich, moist soil condition that it loves and it likes full sun to part shade. Okay, let's go on to picking it. Here we are with our beautiful spring crests, our beautiful cardamine, and we are going to harvest this one, this basil rosette. And you want to get in there, pull it up, just nudge it up. It's got a very shallow root system, a little fibrous shallow root system. And at this point, you want to actually cut off the root, which is where all the dirt is. We can say, stay there, dirt. And then this is what we take home to eat, this beautiful rosette. It actually has a little flower stem poking up that's not quite open. The white flowers, we'll get to that in a moment with ID. But this is what we gather. Let's gather another beauty here. Just wipe away the debris. We don't want that in our plate. And then we cut right there. And again, that's the beauty we eat. And here you can see the flower a little bit better. These white four petaled flowers. Again, we'll probably do a close up for you in a second. But all of this is food as long as it is tender. So whatever is tender and when foraging again, you're removing the funk from around it. So you can just go down here and cut. See that very nice cut and kind of remove any funky leaves, anything that doesn't look appealing. There we go. And that's going to go into our dish. Again, we're going to test to see if everything is tender in here. We may want to remove anything that is tough. So we'll test that as well. Yep. Into the basket we go. 
Here we are up close with cardamine, cardamine hirsuta, and you can see its blooms, its flowers. It has a four petaled flower. Those petals are arranged in the shape of a cross or an X, hence its old name, Crucif Cruciferae or Cruciferous family. And we look here, this is the flower stalk, flower stalk. And here you can see an aerial leaf. This is the leaf that grows up on the flower stalk and it is also compound. But now let's get back down to the whole basal rosette, basically. That's where the leaves are emerging from the center point and radiating out. And this whole plant is quite small. I have the um, ruler here for reference and you can see that things are not so large. This is a six inch ruler, so you can see the, the, um, the dimensions. And now I want us to go deep into looking at a leaf itself, one single leaf. I'm gonna pop one of them off and put it down right here so you can see what it looks like. Here's one leaf. I'm gonna get another one just so you get a sense of leaves. And let's go for another one right there. And this one, this is the aerial leaf, which alternate up the stalk. I'm gonna put it down in a second so you can see that aerial leaf right there. And so what's happening here is we have what are called compound leaves. So this is one leaf right here, one leaf made up of little leaflets that are pinnately arranged like a feather. And they have a terminal leaflet right there. So you can see that in there. The leaflets can be round and sort of chubby. And then as they get more mature and they grow, grow up the flower stalk, they start to elongate and also shorten. So that's what's happening. So this is a compound pinnately arranged leaf of the cardamine hirsuta. I wanted to mention what happens when these flowers turn into seeds. They become elongated seed pods that are called siliques and they will shoot their seeds out when they're mature. So watch out for that. It's a super fun moment out there. That will happen maybe in a week or two, depending on the weather. Cardamine hirsuta is out there in the meadows, in the fields, in the gardens. It is carpeting the earth right now, waiting for us. It is an exciting moment. Oh, I should add that we have a digestive stimulant as well in our hands here that will cause a little bit of pooping, <laughs> maybe a little encouraging of poop. So just to say that, but really what we have is a food food that we can throw into our salad, that we can put into soups and um, create sauces with. And the flavor is a cabbage, arugula, watercress kind of a flavor. And nutritionally speaking, we share the, the Brassicaceae family nutrients. There's not a lot of data on this plant, but we can assume it's got a lot of vitamin C, beta carotene, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and so on. So we have a gift from Mother Earth waiting out there for us. May it bring you out hunting for wild greens. And if you've enjoyed this and you would like more, check out my online course, Wild Food Health Boosters and Herbal Remedies at wildfoodhealthboosters.com. See you next time.